as the trade war between the U.S. and China is heating up, growing concerns about Chinese attacks and espionage in cyberspace against the United States. For more insight, let's bring in President and CEO of the Center for Security Policy and former Chief of Staff of the National Security Council, Fred Flights. Fred, so we're going to pick your brain on cyber, but first, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about uh, the DNI spot currently open. The president announced John Radcliffe is, you know, stepping down. He's taking himself out of the running. Um, our sources here uh, are telling Fox News there's a whole host of names. The president's going back to the drawing board, looking at some some folks he's been thinking about for months. We're hearing Representative Pete Hoekstra. We're hearing maybe Joe Dunford. We're hearing you're a contender. Tell us what you think about the role. Well, uh, by way of full disclosure, I, I have been in consideration for this job. I think the leading candidate is probably Pete Hoekstra, the, the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Okay. He's a good friend of mine. I worked for him for five years. He would be a fabulous choice. He understands uh, how to work with Congress. He understands the intelligence community, and uh, he has my vote. Would you be a fabulous choice? Well, we'll see. I mean, if I if I was asked, I'm available to serve. Uh, yeah. I was I was just privileged to have been asked by the president. So we'll see what happens. So can you tell us for folks who who maybe don't know that much about this position? It's a very senior, uh, you know, if not the most senior intelligence position in the government, but it flies mostly under the radar. So tell us a little bit about what the DNI does. Well, you know, it's an it's sort of an unknown position, and it is a controversial one. It was created because of perception. Uh, by the 9-11 Commission that if the intelligence agencies had shared information, they may have stopped 9-11. Mm -hmm. So the DNI was set up to coordinate the sharing of information. The DNI is also the president's chief intelligence advisor, and it's his responsibility to make sure the president gets the most accurate and, and nonpartisan and unbiased intelligence possible. Yeah. He has to make sure the intelligence community speaks truth to power. So he's like the ground truth guy. He's the guy that's got to give the president or she the bottom line about what intelligence analysts all over the globe are reporting back home? He's, suppo he's supposed to say, uh, supposed to make sure they get the most accurate intelligence. The problem is, the office of the DNI has exploded in size since it was created. Yeah. It has become a 17th intelligence agency with thousands of employees, with a huge headquarters in Virginia. And there's all kinds of bureaucrats and officials. It wasn't supposed to be another a 17th intelligence agency. Right. That's why there are bipartisan concerns about how large it is. And I know this is a concern of the president and of this administration to try to streamline the, 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 the office of the, the DNI so it will be more effective. Occasionally we hear murmurs about, you know, President Trump wants to just do away with the position entirely. Is that something you could get behind? Well, I, I mean, that's not practical because the DNI was created by legislation, but I think a lot can be done to streamline it and get rid of duplication and to figure out what was it intended to do. It was supposed to share intelligence, make sure intelligence right. is shared, be the president's chief intelligence advisor. But all these new bureaucracies set up within the ODNI, I, I think, is you know, if intelligence is too bureaucratized, it affects our national security because we can't get stuff done. The information won't get to the president. It's very important this be fixed. I think one of the issues issues we hear um, from our security experts here all the time in terms of issues that are impacted by bureaucratic intelligence making is cybersecurity. It's probably, you know, a top tier issue for whoever the next DNI is. Can you tell us your sort of what you would worry about most on day one dealing with the cyber threats? It's crucial that protecting the integrity of our elections is a priority of the DNI. And, and the Trump administration has done a lot on this. The president issued an executive order last September. Ambassador Bolton said in November that we have been engaged in overt, offensive cyber, F cyber attacks cyber strategy to, to, to defend our elections. My concern is that the next DNI has to deal with something that no one wants to talk about, and that is that intelligence probably was weaponized during the, during the 2016 presidential campaign to stop President Trump from winning. And I think that there have to be procedures to make sure this never happens again, that if there's ever a reason... So is that the... Do you feel like that's the number one issue on the table right now? I think it's an important issue for the president, that no matter whether, whether, you, whether you think this happened or not, yeah. there have to be very strong rules that whenever we, the, it becomes necessary, maybe for the NSA, to spy on the personnel of a presidential campaign, there are, there's a very high threshold to do that. Congress has to be notified. And if, if intelligence officers are asked to do something unethical, such as doing that, uh, they, it, better, they better friend, report that be to time? the inspector general. I mean, that takes a lot of time and energy. I'm not saying it's not important, but is there time to look backwards when 2020 
is so fast approaching, you know, wouldn't you be more concerned about safeguarding future elections? We have to do both. We definitely have to protect the integrity of our election. But look, there are millions of Americans who think that our intelligence community was used against the Trump campaign. We need rules in place to make sure that never happens again to another presidential candidate. We need to tell the existing Democratic presidential candidates, you're not going to be spied on by the U.S. intelligence yeah. community. I think we really have to make sure of that. Important guarantees. Well, Fred, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for weighing in on all of this. We'll check back in with you soon. Good to be here.